My last review with a Sigma lens was five years ago, the 30mm f2.8. I was enthusiastic about it since not only was it very sharp, but its price, currently about £150, euros, euros or $199, put it in the bargain category. The three prime lenses I'm looking at here are designated the Sigma Contemporary range. They come in 16, 30 and 56mm focal lengths and they're all usefully fast, sporting an f1.4 maximum aperture. They are made in Japan and Sigma say they have paid special attention to the out of focus characteristics of these lenses. The lenses are a matching design with quality filled plastic bodies and metal bayonet mounts. With a semi matte black finish they are about as workmanlike as you can get. There is a focusing ring and that's it apart from a small metallic dot with a C for contemporary, denoting that these are Sigma lenses designed for mirrorless cameras. The focusing ring has no infinity or close focus stops and is very smooth in operation. All the lenses come with a hood which usefully fits backwards over the lens to minimise the storage space required in the bag. They are described as splash and dust proof rather than weather sealed. These are nebulous terms and I just take them to mean the lenses will take reasonable hard use but not abuse. There is no stabilisation, though since most Micro Four Thirds cameras come with built in stabilisation now, that hardly matters. They are all relatively light too, given their f1.4 aperture. There is not much to say about these lenses in use. All three focus at similar speeds to the Panasonic or Olympus equivalents and all are similarly silent apart from the 30mm which is rather quieter than its Panasonic counterpart. I prefer the feel of the manual focus on all of these Sigmas to their competition. All lenses focus smoothly, it's a given these days, but the Sigmas have a weighted feel to them which makes them feel far more expensive than they are. A nice touch that. Now the nitty gritty. These are reasonably priced third party wide aperture lenses. A description which understandably leads to a bit of fear, uncertainty and doubt among many photographers. Forget it. From the 16 via the 30 to 56, I'd call sharpness excellent, spectacular, and spectacular respectively. The 30 and 56 millimeters are so sharp at f1.4 that there is no reason to stop them down except for more depth of field. The 30 millimeter outperforms Panasonic's 25 millimeter f1.4, and the 56 millimeter both the Olympus 45 millimeter and 75 millimeter f1.8 wide open in spite of its wider aperture. The 16mm understandably needs stopping down to f2.8 to 4 to match its longer stable mates. But at 1.4 its edge sharpness is much better than my much loved little Olympus 17mm at f1.8. Sigma gives a more balanced approach and I think the better one since the image from the 16mm is usable right across the frame, important for landscapes. Purple fringing is taken care of in camera as is distortion, the flare gave me no problems. Nearest focus on all the lenses is usefully close but definitely not macro. Sigma's attention to the roundness of the iris diaphragm and thus the out of focus areas has paid off and these lenses exhibit a nicely smooth rounded characteristic. I can sum up the performance of these lenses by saying that regardless of what Olympus or Panasonic lenses you buy, you will not get sharper pictures. These Sigmas reinforce my personal view that f1.4 is a more effective maximum aperture for micro four thirds lenses than f1.2, when the weight, cost and bolt penalty is out of proportion to the half stop increase in speed and the marginally shallower depth of field available. 16, 30, 56 gives a rough doubling of focal length which is the ideal grouping. As a set for APS-C they are the equivalent angle of view of 24, 45 and 85 on full frame, a truly classic set. For Micro Four Thirds it would be nice to have a wider angle lens available, but if you added the Lawa 7.5mm f2 you would have a superb all purpose high speed prime set. You could buy different but not better. I wish they did a 12, 25 and 45mm set for Micro Four Thirds though. At a time when Panasonic and Olympus prices seem to be going through the roof, here are a working set of unpretentious lenses offering class leading sharpness and speed at a reasonable price. 
If I were building a set of primes from new, I'd buy these. I'll finish with a word of financial advice. The 56mm can be viewed as a bit longer Olympus 45mm f1.8, or Panasonic Noctichron, or a bit shorter Olympus 75mm. My advice is to buy it as a bit longer Noctichron, or a bit shorter 75mm. That way you save enough money to buy the 16 or the 30mm as well. Thanks for watching.